No ranch for sale no more. <laughs> Can you believe we actually did it? I know. Thank you, girls, for believing in me. <sighs> oh, the air is so fresh out here. It's so clean. There's so much of it. That's for sure. We're going to be happy here. <laughs> I know we will. Mm. Oh, hey. Let's take a picture. All right. Okay. Okay. Get the sign. Get the sign. Yeah. Oh, All right. Get the house. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, let's do a goofy one. All right. Okay, okay, really. Really. Ready? Timer. That's one of my fondest memories. One of the happiest days of my life. I couldn't believe it when my parents sat me down and told me that they bought this ranch and that we're moving to the countryside. But I quickly fell in love with it here, and I can't see myself living anywhere else. But then my dad deployed and was killed in battle fighting for our country. Chaplain Gonzalez, we are here to regretfully inform you that you're that day, our whole world turned upside down. And everything quickly went downhill after that. Pastor Williams always preached hope and faith. My mom went to his church every Sunday. She still had her hope. But when my dad died, I lost my faith. Morning, girl. Did you miss me? I'd be so lost without you. I think that means you'd be lost without me, too. <laughs> you really like taking care of her, don't you? I love it. I love her. <laughs> well, one day, this will all be yours to take care of. That's one of the reasons we bought it, was so we could pass it on to you. I wish you were still here to teach me what to do. I know. Me too. But just remember, he believed in you. And I do too. When the day comes, you'll know exactly how to take care of it. I just know it. I remember when your dad taught you how to ride her. I remember too. I was so afraid that first time I thought I was gonna hurt her. You weren't going to. Well, I know that now. <laughs> she was the last thing dad ever gave me. Go on. <laughs> I know you want to. I'll see you inside for lunch. Okay. Open your eyes now. Do you like her? <laughs> She's breathtaking. <laughs> well, go on. Go on. Hey, here, try this. Put your hand like this. 
What are we doing? What we're doing is called a horseman's handshake. It is a very respectful way to treat an animal. And it's also a very polite way to say, good morning. <laughs> Go ahead, try it. Good morning. See if she'll give you permission to pet her. Hi there. Well, it looks like somebody's got a new best friend. <laughs> Hey, Chris. You don't ever hear your phone ring, do you? No, I, I've been riding. My sister's only a few years older than us, and she's never off of that thing. I mean, she has to check it every minute. My dad's always yelling at it. Yeah, I'd rather have my hands on her reins than on my phone. So, I just thought I'd come visit you. Just because we're not in school doesn't mean we can't hang out. Did you just come from practice? Yeah. Someone forgot to tell Coach Davis that we're on break. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you decide to play football for the school. I still need the improvement, though. Yeah, at least that's how I feel. <laughs> what? Come on, no way. I've seen you play. Like, I think you're really good. I bet you'll be the star running back in no time. Hey. Hi. You need help? Sure. How's Chris? He's fine. He's coming around again tomorrow. Really? What? He's cute. Mom! Well, <laughs> I'm right, aren't I? Stop. Do you like him? We are not talking about this. Why not? Seriously? Sometimes it's more like we're roommates. Well, isn't that a good thing? Actually, um... There is something I wanted to talk to you about. Pastor Williams is going to come over for lunch today. He's only going to talk about church again. Do you haven't been since your father passed. I don't want to go anymore. Why not? Mom, please don't pressure me. All right. But you can't avoid it forever. It looks beautiful, honey. Yes, I love all the colors and how they shine and light. <laughs> all right. So what do you think, honey? I think it's perfect. <laughs> it's just perfect. That looks great, Mike. You think God would approve? Oh, uh, well, Mike, God doesn't micromanage. He leaves that up to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks great. Look, I just want to thank you for everything you've done. Mike. Oh. Not really. I mean, you're the one that convinced me to move out here. You you found this historical building and you restored it with your own two hands, man. That's big time. Now that we've been friends for a long time, Mike, but you went above and beyond, man. You would have done exactly the same thing for oh, me. You know I would yeah, yeah. You know come I here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we just need a congregation. You know what they say? If you build it, they will come. <laughs> Let's hope. Let's hope. And if you paint it, they will most assuredly come. <laughs> Absolutely. No, you see? No, no. Wait, see up there where it comes together? No, 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 that's your car. I'm afraid of heights. I can't get up there. I can't. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why are you avoiding Pastor Williams? Because every time I see him, I can only picture Dad's funeral. Grace, I just don't believe anymore, Mom. Don't say that. What's the point in prayer if I don't believe in the words? You know, your dad is still with us. He's always going to be here. I 
still feel like I'm waiting for him to walk through my door. Like any second it's gonna happen. But it just never does. We have to stay strong for each other so that we can get through this together. Rebecca, how are you doing? How's Grace? She's, she's okay. Yeah? Considering everything. You know, I think about you guys a lot. Haven't seen her since the funeral. I feel like after everything your family has done for me, I owe you guys. I mean, the fact is, without his hard work, this town wouldn't even have a church. I went to his house. But the truth is, we're about to lose it. What? Well, you know how I sold all the cattle off? Yeah. Mike had become a really good rancher. I tried my hardest to do all of that stuff, and I just I just couldn't keep up with that and with taking care of my daughter all on my own. You should have to. That's too much for any one person. And Grace doesn't even know. <laughs> so how was my husband when you two served together? Oh, Mike? It was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Marginally. Yeah, he, Mike, Mike was great. He, well, wait a minute. I don't want to blow his big old head up any bigger than it already is. No, Mike, Mike was awesome. Mike was awesome. He was a great sergeant. Guys loved him. They run through a wall for him, take a bullet for the guy. I, I think we all would. That is not how you used to talk about me when I was giving you orders, my friend. <laughs> no, no, not at all. You weren't talking about me like that when I was telling you to do 20 more push-ups. That I, I was in. It almost made me quit. Is that what made you ditch a rifle for a Bible? No, I, I was long gone. When I started to really work on my faith, I left the Army. Then I came back. Just not as a soldier this time, but as a pastor. Mm-hmm. And he served his country proud. In both ways. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sweetie. You always had a knack. My men revered you. They would open up to you, tell you their dreams, their hopes. They confess everything to you, not to me, just you, naturally. No, they were just scared of the Lord, man. <laughs> it was like confession a lot of times. That being said, anything you want to confess, Mike? <laughs> Now's as good a time as any. Well, now that you mention it, um, I've been called and asked to go back and do another tour of duty. Really? Really. You okay with that? Well, I can't tell him not to go, but... <laughs> You're afraid. It's okay. 
I mean, if I were in your position, I'd be afraid to. You know that I don't want to leave you and Grace for 10 minutes, let alone months at a time, but I, I just don't, I don't see any way I could say no. I don't, my, my men, they need me. My, my country needs me. Did not. <laughs> you totally did. <laughs> How's Faith doing? <laughs> She's great. Well, I'm sure that's just because she gets to spend all of her time with you. <laughs> I still have some work that I need to do, but do you want to help me? I'd love to. Great. I think you'll really enjoy it. How did I let you convince me to do this again? Well, usually I'd get my mom to help me, but you said you wanted to spend more time with me, so... <sighs> yeah, this isn't exactly what I had in mind, though. <laughs> so why would you name her Faith? I didn't. My dad named her. I like it. Yeah, it's okay, I guess. I just okay. Because, to be honest, I just don't know if I have it anymore. What, Faith? Hey, don't say that. Okay, you're gonna get through these tough times. Back, how you doing? Hi. Am I bothering you? Oh, no, it's no bother at all. So I'm just off running errands and just up here working on my sermon. You should be using a sneak peek right now. I oh, know, you know, I can't do that. I just ruined the surprise. <laughs> you know what? Come on up here. Let's, let's have a chat. I mean, what's wrong? Bank's about to foreclose on us. Okay, but you can't give up. I don't know if I have the strength. You're being tested right now. But it's gonna make you stronger. You're gonna get through. Trust me when I tell you this. You're gonna come out stronger. You're gonna get through it. 
But you got to believe that. Have you prayed about it? Yes, yes, I pray, but I just, I feel like, I feel like God's not even... In fact, he's listening to you. I know you don't think he is, but he's listening to you. The thing is, are you listening to him? Because he hopes you are. So you'd be able to respond when he answers. Remember the two virtues that I preach on a lot. Hope and faith. See, when people get in tough times like you are right now when it seems impossible and you want to quit when it's not easy when it's rough that's when you need it the most not the time to quit it's time to fight and through hope and faith you can do that and you're gonna do it you need to fight for your home I believe you want to fight for your home and not just for yourself but for grace Y'all both got to fight. Because I'm going to tell you right now, Rebecca, if you're not willing to fight, no one else will. See why your parents wanted to move here. I know. I love it here. What about your place? Um, I I grew up on my farm. It's all I've ever known, really. Do you want to be a farmer? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I do. Once my dad retires, it'll all be mine. What about football? I don't know, everyone's always telling me how good I am at it, but I mean, I guess the farm has to come first. Maybe you can do both. Yeah, I'd like that. My mom wants me to run this place one day. And I don't mind the hard work, but I don't know if I can do it alone. The only thing I'm afraid of is letting my dad down. I think you'll do just fine. Will you help me? Do you want me to? What do you think? <laughs> Hi. How are your parents? They're good. Grace keeping you busy? Putting you to work? Yeah, she is, but I'm having fun. <laughs> That's good. Are you hungry? A little. OK, well, I just made an apple pie if you want to go in and grab a slice. Awesome. All right. We'll see you inside, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Hey, sweetie. Hey. <laughs> Can I uh, talk to you for a second? Yeah. Is it about that sign I saw? Yeah. Um, so we're going to have an estate sale on Saturday. Okay. So anything that you don't need, I'd like for you to go ahead and box it up today and I'll be doing the same thing. I don't get it though. Why is it so urgent? We're broke, Grace. What? The ranch is in a lot of debt and um, if we don't come up with some money soon, it's... Are you serious? Well... We haven't had any income coming in. And we've still had to make all the mortgage payments, pay all the expenses, cover the cost of the cattle, and... But we already sold off all the cattle. Yeah, but I had to sell them under market value. It stopped the bleeding for a bit, but... <laughs> you like it here, don't you? Do you remember what it was like before we came here? 
two bedroom apartment in the city. Your dad and I working all the time. Didn't leave much time for, for us as a family. I remember. Things got a lot better for us when we got here. I know. I love it here, Grace. I do too. That's why I need your help. So that we don't lose it, okay? Hey, Hi. you don't need to go home anytime soon, do you? No way. I need your help. Okay, I'm all yours. Great, follow me. Okay. Come in. Books. Yeah, I love to read. What about you? Uh, if it's a good enough book, someone's gonna make a movie about it, so why bother to read it? Because it's fun to? Ooh, I don't know. So you really have to get rid of everything? Yeah, I guess most of this stuff is from when I was a kid anyway. What about you? I'm sure your room is full of stuff you don't need anymore. Um. Not really, actually. I mean, I grew up on a farm, so my parents' ideas of gifts were stuff that the farm also needed. Like what? Tools, mostly. Although, one year, I did get a tractor. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I thought it was the coolest gift ever, too, until my dad said I couldn't ride it until I was 15. Well, at least it's something you can use now and for years to come. Like you said, you're gonna stay on the farm, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely a country kid. Wouldn't know what to do with myself in the city. Did you know I'm from the city? Yeah, I did. Do you ever want to go back there? No, I love it here way too much. Good. I'm really glad you said that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going anywhere. Besides, I wouldn't be able to take Faith into the city. You know, Faith was my horse. I wouldn't leave her either. Hopefully a bunch of people see this and we'll take these, hit the neighborhoods. Yeah, y'all just come on in. Everybody come on and grab one. And uh, I give everybody one of these and we'll get it done, all right? Let's just kind of just spread out all over and uh, let's just flood the neighborhood with them. Some of you go that way, some of you come with me. And uh, big smiles, big smiles. Let's go, all right? Let's get it done. All right. What is it? Um, can I talk to you? What now? Just come downstairs with me for a sec, okay? What are you doing? I wanted to see if there was anything you wanted to keep before. Mom! Look, you know we have to get rid of everything that we don't need. But this is Dad's stuff. And I realize that this isn't going to be easy for you. No, it's not. Why should it be? I'm only doing this because I have no other choice here. Not Dad's stuff, please. I'm sorry, but we have to. I can't believe this. Did you know that when I first met your father, he had nothing? I had just come back from college to see my mom, and there he was, outside the train station. I had to wait for my ride to turn up, and so I just sat there watching this guy just tell him bad jokes and 
doing his best to raise money for a good cause. He was a little older than me. He had, you know, scruff on his face and <laughs> sweatshirt and ripped jeans. He was adorable. <laughs> but just in need of a woman's touch, you know. <laughs> he smiled at me. And I smiled back. And then we started talking and it was just like, like we had known each other forever, even though we had literally just met. <laughs> and that was the moment we knew. Your dad gave this to me on our first anniversary. Together forever. This is what's important to keep, okay? That way, all you have to do is look down to remember how much we both loved each other and how much we love you. You know your dad would have wanted us to do whatever it takes to keep this ranch. And no. That's why we have to sell things now before we're forced to sell things that, that we don't want to sell. What do you mean? It's the last thing that I would want to do. No. No, you don't mean hey. I hope it never has to come to that. It'll never come to that. Do you hear me? Never! Hey, what's wrong? Is everything okay? Just come with me, okay? This is Ben Clark again. I can't stress enough how urgent it is that we speak. As you are aware from your foreclosure notice, you don't have much time until the bank takes possession of your property, so please call me back. You have both my office and cell phone numbers. I feel like we've said goodbye a million times. Right? <laughs> Yeah, I know. She'll be okay. The big girl. <laughs> I want to make you both proud of me. I know you will. <laughs> hey, oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh, you two, you two are something else. While I'm gone, I know it's not always going to be easy, but I know that you can handle it. All I want you to do is do your best. It's all anybody can ask. Dad, I'm going to miss you so much. I already miss you two more than you could possibly imagine. But when you close your eyes, I'll be there. I'm never going to let you go. No one will ever take you from me. I don't know what I'd do without you. So what's it like to ride her? You've never ridden a horse before? <laughs> When I ride her, I feel free. I just feel so happy and alive. Thank you. 
You two look great together. And she's such a pretty horse. And... And... And you're such a pretty girl. I mean, there's a reason I avoided even making eye contact with you the first few years of school. <laughs> What's that? I don't know, I can't explain it. It's like, I felt sick just looking at you. It... Gee, thanks. You no, know, I, I don't mean it like that. It's just, you know, you, you're the prettiest girl in school. I was scared. I was afraid that if I tried to talk to you, <laughs> you'd just walk away. I mean, if you did that, I wouldn't be able to stay at school anymore. <laughs> well, it's a good thing I spoke to you that day. You finally approached me at the water fountain. You remember that? So you've really never ridden a horse? Actually, I have not, no. I mean, everyone says riding is so much fun, but... Well, how about I teach you? Uh, I don't know. It took me long enough to learn how to ride my bike. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Trust me, let me help you out with something, too. Uh... Squeezing is like a gas pedal. It means go fast. So the harder you squeeze, not with your here, but with your heels, the faster the horse will go. So a lot of times you'll be thinking, I want to slow down, I want to slow down. But you're telling the horse, yeah. <laughs> OK, so here, watch. We'll just go. I know, right? So there's a lot to know. But it's all very easy, see? Very easy. So what you practice are figure eights, right? Here's a figure eight. Now look how little I have to do. Not scary, right? You look like you're scared. <laughs> Touch her again. You have to believe in your horse, you have to believe in yourself, and you have to trust me, all right? Okay. <laughs> See? Just like riding a bike. If the bike had a mind of its own. <laughs> Come on. <Bye>. Come on. <laughs> Come on, yeah. come on, come on, come on, come on, come here, look, it's okay, listen to me, listen <gasps> to me. You trust me, right? Yeah. Okay, you trust me, you trust Faith, you trust yourself. You got this. You got this. Okay. Okay, all right, here we go, come on, Faith, come on, Faith. Let's go. <laughs> come on. Look at you! You're a natural born cowgirl! <laughs> I'm doing it! I'm doing it! <laughs> yeah, okay! <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried about you. You ask for help? You know, for, for guidance? Pastor Williams asked me about you. He actually came by here the other day. Did you talk to him? No, I didn't want to see him. Why not? Because the last time I saw him, he was burying my father. He's worried about you and your mom, you know. Do you want to come to church with me on Sunday? Not really. Even if I want you to? I know you do. But why? Because I like spending time with you there. And with everything going on in your life right now, I think it could be really good for you.
Hungry? Wait. What? Why don't we give thanks? Really? Sure. I mean, we used to do it all the time. But we haven't since Dad passed. I know. But I think that we should start again, especially now. I really don't feel like it. Come on, Grace. I'm sorry, Mom, but no. You know that your dad named your horse Faith for a reason? It's because he always wanted you to have it. He never wanted you to quit believing in him or in God. Oh, look at you. <laughs> Hi. How you doing? Let me help you with that. Oh, it's all right. Oh. No, it's not all right. Let me help you. <laughs> Helping people is kind of what I do, right? Uh, I took not realize how heavy it was. Yeah, you don't topple over here by yourself. The wind's blowing. Uh. Yeah, it's kind of my job to help people, Rebecca. Well, I don't think carrying heavy furniture was on your resume to be a pastor. Well, I don't think you remember who I work for. <laughs> I mean, God's my boss. He's watching me 24-7. Did I ever tell you why I became a pastor? No. No, I actually never did. I don't talk about it much. In fact, I've never even told Mike what I'm about to tell you. Growing up, my childhood was rough. You know, I, um, I got into a lot of trouble. I can't tell you how many times I got kicked out of school. But eventually, uh, I turned my life around. You know, I, I found Christ and one thing just led to another. I found myself in church more. And I don't even think that was a mere accident because that's where I met Sandra, met my wife, and here I am. And uh, that's what I want to do in my life now. I want to help other people turn their lives around. Widowed mom whose house is about to be foreclosed, he sure know how to pick them. God knows how to pick them. And he picked me. He picked me. God saved me. And that's what I believe. I believe he wants me to save other people. And that's what I want to spend the rest of my life doing. So I'm telling you, not just as your pastor, but as your friend. Let me help you. You don't owe me anything. Yes, I do. Rebecca, listen. We don't have a church without you and Mike. Mike helped me build God a home. At least let me help you try and save yours. Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming. All right, beautiful day. I'm excited and I hope that you, well, you know what, I know. I know you all are excited just as much as I am for the grand opening of our new church. Yeah. Now, while I've always believed that God has been here, always been here, let's just say that he's got another place, another home to call his own, right? Before I do the ceremonial ribbon cut, 
there's just one person we all have to thank. Besides the Lord, of course. I don't want to forget him. But this someone, he made this all possible and made my dream a reality. Big Mike, come on up. <laughs> now, he doesn't know this, but he's the one that's going to make the ceremonial ribbon cut. Mike, oh, you're going to do it. Man. Come on. Man. Yeah. Oh, hey, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the applause. But um, really, truly, you should be applauding yourself. Because while it's true, I did, I did help convince Pastor Williams to come here in the first place. I really wasn't sure whether or not this town even wanted a church. But we restored this beautiful building. It is a picturesque little church, beautiful. And guess what? We have you. You are here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's true, this building, it's a great building. But without you, it would just be a great empty building. So truly, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And thank you, of course, to Pastor for being here. He's become a wonderful integral part of our family and I know that he's going to become a wonderful integral part of your families as well. So without further ado, shall we? I guess I can, I can take off another 600, but that's as slow as I can go. I'll take it. All right, I'll go get the paperwork. For Great, you. thanks. Hey, what's up? What's wrong? I don't think we're making enough. It's still early. You just have to have some hope. I'm just saying you can't do it alone, you know? So what? You want me to go to church and ask God for help? No. How'd we do? I know it looks bad, but look. Don't give up. Hey. Hey. How you doing? Fine. Today was a disaster. 
the worst part is my mom's gonna want to sell Faith next. Seems like your mom's gonna want to sell everything she can before losing Faith. I'm not gonna let her. I lost my dad. I can't lose her, too. So what are you gonna do? I don't know. But if I lose her, I'll have nothing left. Yeah, but I mean, what's worse? Losing your horse or losing your home? She's not just any horse. No, I know that, but... Faith is everything to me. She's my best friend. Where are you gonna go, Grace? Where are you gonna live? I can't believe you're saying this. So, so what, you think I should just get rid of her? No, that's not what I'm saying. Look, this isn't Faith's fault that things got this bad. Why should she be punished? She shouldn't. But if she's the only chance that the ranch has left, then maybe your mom's right. Maybe you don't have a choice but to sell her. Just go home, Chris. What? Go home. I'm just trying to help. Grace, please. Did you hear me? I said I want you to leave. I'm not gonna let them take you from me. If I lose the ranch, then fine, but I'm not gonna lose you. Really very proud of you, you know that? Why? Oh, you've been feeding her, exercising her, grooming her, taking great care of her. Well, I enjoy it. Makes her so happy. Listen, sweetheart, when I'm gone, I want you to know I'm counting on you, okay? Keep taking care of her. Protect her, make sure she's safe. Keep her groomed, keep her fed, exercised. Whoa, 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 hey, 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 it's okay, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right, hey, down. Come on, Faith, down, there you go. Got her? Yeah, I got her. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Hello? I've been trying to reach you urgently, Mrs. Evans. Please, I need more time. We keep giving you more time. We filed extension after extension after you missed one mortgage payment after another. I realize that, but... And I am sorry, Mrs. Evans, I really am. But as you are aware, your ranch is scheduled for foreclosure on Monday. There's nothing more that we can do. What time do I have until exactly? Monday morning, 9 a.m. I suggest you remove all your personal belongings by then, when the ranch will officially become the bank's property. What about me? What about my daughter? Anyone found on site will be forcefully removed by the sheriff, but... I trust it won't come to that. Hi. Sorry. 
Didn't mean to startle you. My name is Luke Stark. I own a cattle ranch just across the state line. Nice to meet you. How can I help you? Well, I was driving through town, and I saw your sign for an estate sale. Although from the looks of it, it seems that I got here a little too late. I was checking out some of your ranching equipment. But unfortunately, you don't have anything I don't already have. I did notice, though, that white horse. Is she for sale? My daughter is going to be happy. Oh, yeah. Stop! Wait, what are you doing? No, get off of me! You can't take my horse! I'm afraid I already bought her. No, sir, please! You can't take her away from me! I, I'm sorry. I really am, but I already bought her. Mom, Mom, you can't do this! I want to do, but is selling her even enough money to pay off the bank? No, it's not, but but this, with the other money, it can pay back some of it, and maybe I could call the bank and negotiate. Maybe? Maybe? Listen, your horse will be in good hands with me and my daughter. I promise you we'll take great care of her. We'll treat her like family. She already has a family. No. Good luck. Mom, it's not too late. You don't have to do this. You can give him the money back. No, I can't. I have no choice. I feel like I just ripped her heart out. She's been through so much and... Instead of making it easier on her, I just made it a whole lot worse. It's better that we lose our home. I'm doing my best here without my husband. You know how hard this has been on me. Now we sold everything that we own. If you can hear me, I need you now more than ever. I could use some miracle. God, I know that it's been a while. It's just hard for me after my dad passed. But you first took my dad from me. 
and then faith. And it looks like you're going to take my home from me now, too. What did I do to deserve this? I'm sorry that sometimes I lost hope. And even my faith. I'm not as strong as I want to be. As I should be. I'm asking that you bless us and watch over us. I trust you. And I believe that you have a plan and that you know what's best. I know that you're protecting me and watching over me. And I know that my dad is too. Can I come in? Sure. Are we homeless yet, Mom? That's not funny. I just wanted to let you know that I'm going off to church. Can you wait a few minutes before you go? Um, yeah. I'm really glad you decided to come with me today. Me too. Hey, Mom. I'm really sorry for the way I acted. I... I was... I was scared. I know, sweetie. I realize now that... everything's gonna work out. How do you know that? Hope and faith, remember? I'll be right back. Hey, Chris. Hey. Can I talk to you for a sec? Yeah. Surprised you came to church today. I know. I know, but... I need to tell you that I'm sorry. You were just trying to help me and I pushed you away. Can you forgive me? Of course. Although I don't think I have a choice, given that we're at church. <laughs> Maybe we can talk some more after the service? Yeah, I'd like to. Okay. Should we head in? <laughs> you know, I've been talking a lot about hope and faith. But today I want to add a third virtue to the list. And that's the virtue of charity. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And now abideth hope, faith, and charity. And then Paul goes on to say that of these three, charity is the greatest. And it got me to thinking, Raise your hand if you've ever given somebody something before. Now, we all give money, clothing, any kind of aid. And this should be the way we all aspire to live. Each and every one of you sitting here today, 
You should feel an obligation to give charity. And you know why? Because giving charity is also giving love. Love. And when we love, that same love increases hope and faith in those that receive it. There's a personal reason why I chose to add charity to my sermon today. Inspiration. And not just from God, but also from each and every one of you here today. The proud members of this community and members of this church that I love so much. You guys inspired me. You saw a need from a family. And you came together and you unified and you met that need. But this just wasn't any old family that you took care of. See, without this family, we wouldn't have a church. Without this family, we would not be sitting where we are right now. Here's a family. for a miracle. Go on, open it. That's from everybody here. up a charity. I wanted to see you save your home. We all did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all of you. Thank you. But I never asked for any charity. We know. And I didn't want any handouts. We know that too, Rebecca. <laughs> How can I take this? This is just it's too much. It's Rebecca, too much. listen. Everybody here. They all know what you and your family has done for both the church and the country that they love so much. And they were pleased, pleased to open their hearts and their wallets <laughs> to you and Grace. They love you, we all do. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to reach you, Mr. Clark. Of course. I realize your deadline is tomorrow morning. I know. That's why I called. I want to let you know that I have everything I need to pay what I owe. You have it all? Really? I sure do. Well, you certainly left it right down to the wire. I did. But what's important is that I have it now. This ranch is going to stay ours, not the bank's. My daughter and I aren't going anywhere. I think we're really gonna like it here. I think so too. Perfect spot for us to plant our roots. Mm -hmm. I want this to be our home and Grace's forever. It will be. believe what everyone at the church did for us. I know. Me neither. And you're sure it's not? 
with this and the rest of the money? It is. I already talked to the bank. You okay? I'm so happy that we didn't lose the house. It's just... What's he doing here? Good afternoon, Mrs. Evans and Grace. How's Faith doing? Not so great, actually. What do you mean? What, what happened? Well, to tell you the truth, it seems like she's homesick. What? I think she missed you a lot. But you know what? I think you should ask her yourself. Faith? Thank you again so much. My pleasure. I don't understand. Is she ours again? I called Mr. Stark from church. But before she could even say anything, I already told her I wanted you to have your horse back. I couldn't sleep at all knowing I'd torn her away from you. It broke my heart. I offered to buy her back, but told me just to go ahead and tear up the check. That she'd be yours again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you got to keep the ranch. Would have been a travesty to lose this place. We have enough money to repay the bank now. Have you thought about what you're going to do next? No, we haven't had time to come up with a game plan yet. But the ranch isn't generating any revenue for us anymore. Well, we should change that. Why'd you want Faith to begin with? Well, I have a little girl, and I thought she'd love your horse. But don't worry, lots of other horses out there. <laughs> you know how kids love horses. Mom, mom, th mom, that's it. That's how we can get the ranch making money again. What do you mean? We can start a business, horse trail rides, horse riding lessons. We have so many acres on our property that we can use. Uh, I don't know. Mom, we have to give ourselves a fighting chance to hold on to this place forever. Well, I mean, it's a good idea, but where are we gonna come up with the money to buy more horses? You could always bring on a partner. Really? Well, I'd at least give it some serious thought. My daughter's much younger than you, but she absolutely adores horses, as do I. And there aren't any other businesses in the area like it. Think you can come up with a good name? <laughs> Hope Ranch has now become a reality. With Luke's help, we went out and bought some beautiful horses. But while all of our new horses are beautiful, Faith is, of course, still my favorite. I watched your game yesterday. Really? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? I thought if you knew I was watching you, it would throw you off. <laughs> it probably would have, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that catch you made was pretty incredible. I was so proud of you. I'm really proud of you, too, you know? For what? For everything you've done here. And for not giving up. Thank you.
Mom and I have already signed up all the local schools for class field trips, and adults of all ages are coming too for horseback riding lessons. It's going to take a lot of hard work, but we're excited. And we all know that Hope Ranch will be a success.